Morning, church. It's good to be together. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It was good enough for Paul and Silas. It's good enough for me. I'm Jim Wood. I love Jesus. And I want to invite you to our family today. If you are with us virtually, you are present just as much as if you are here in the spirit. And for those of you who are here in person, it's good to see you this morning. One thing to ask you to do is go ahead and get your Bibles open to John chapter 6. John chapter 6 in the New Testament and our call to worship actually comes from that passage. Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Let's worship our God. Let's just take a moment and thank Jesus. You could do it out loud or in your heart. Scripture says we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and then when you're there in his courts with praise thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you for being here with us Lord thank you we love you Jesus who compares to you Who set the stars in their place? You who calm the raging sea that came crashing over me. Who compares to you? You who 
seated. Good morning. It is good to be together today. If you are visiting with us, we're so glad that you're here. We're a church that's seeking Christ and sharing His love, and we hope that you feel at home, and we hope you feel the love of Jesus today as we worship. I have just a few announcements, great things going on in the life of our congregation, and want to give you kind of the lowdown of how it is that that you can let us know that you're here. So if you're here in um, First Hall, we have, you should have received an envelope, a connection envelope. Please fill that out. Um, Let us know you're here. Um, If you have a prayer concern or praise, let us know that. If you want that confidential, just check that box. Um, online, we have a connection card for you to, to fill out. Please fill that out. Um, also, if you have a prayer concern, praise, let us know. If you check confidential, only Jim Wood and I will see those prayer concerns. Um, giving, you can give above the live feed. There's a connection there, so um, you can give in that way. If you're here in the space, you can just put it in the envelope and leave it on your seat, or you can use text to give, and that number is 530-5683. So it's 757-530-5683. Type in the word give, the amount you'd like to give, and send the text, and it will walk you through the giving process. So great things happening at First Pres. So I've got a bag of goodies here that I want to share with you. Many, many wonderful things that we hope that you will go home with or that you'll come into church and get. So the first one is our Bob Golf study guide. If, um, if you haven't picked yours up yet, they're out in the common area. We're reading the book, Everybody Always by Bob Golf. It's $10 right um, at the kiosk. You can um, pay for it there and pick up the study guide. It's free. If you want to be in a small group, let me know today. Um, Email me or come up to me with a sheet of paper with your name and your email, and I will get you in a small group. We've got a group starting tomorrow, a group starting Wednesday, and a couple groups starting in July. But if you haven't heard from me and you signed up for a group, my mistake, let me know again, and I'll definitely get you in a group. Also, we want you to, uh, what's next on the slides? All right. Um, 
reading the Gospel of John. This is our devotional for the, for the summer. It's 12 weeks in the Gospel of John. Go ahead and start it today. There's a reading for every single day and some reflection questions. And then at the end of the week, you get to think about what it is that God might be telling you. Um, in, in your own life or might be instructing you to do. So we encourage you to pick this up and use it. It is going to be a wonderful summer as we are in the Gospel of John. Also, what's next? Come on. All right, um, kicking it old school. We have Vacation Bible School coming up July 11, 12, and 13. So that's a Sunday night, Monday night, and a Tuesday night. It starts at 5.30. There's gonna be a meal, and then we're gonna have stuff for everybody. So awesome things for our kids. Hunter will let you know more details in the coming weeks, but go ahead and sign up, parents. It's gonna be great. And then our adults have uh, a class as well, which is new for us. Um, uh, we have three instructors, Antipas Harris, Nate Griffin, and Dana Cavanero. So it's going to be a great time as we talk about the golden rule. So um, sign up. Let us know you're coming. We're going to eat. We're going to meet. We're going to learn. We're going to have fun. And I think we're going to have ice cream or snow cones or something too. So sign up. Also, um, what's next? All right. Family mission trip. August 5th through the 8th, it's the best weekend of the year for FPC. Go ahead and sign up. We want you there. We want your kids there. We, um, you do not have to have special skills. I'm going. I don't have any special skills. You just go, and you meet, and you greet, and you have fun, and you serve together. It's great. So, um, so sign up. Let us know that you're coming. And lastly, I think this is last. Yes, our military, um, our military care packages. We're so excited about this opportunity to support our military. So there are two different kinds of care packages. And if you got your summer mailer, if you don't have one, they're, they're out in the commons area. There's a list of items needed. Um, there's items needed for service members and there's items needed for their families that they leave behind. So please look at that list. Bring us your stuff. There's a basket out in the common area we'll be collecting for the next couple weeks. So bring it on, folks. We want to support our military. And most importantly, military families, let us know when your loved one is deployed. We can't send you a care package if we don't know you've gone. So um, there's a special uh, instruction on the connection card today. You can let us know when you're going to be deployed if you have a loved one that's going to be deployed soon. So um, help us support and honor those that we love. That's it. Good morning, church. That was some of our young people in the church in our preschool. It's so good to see all the young people in our preschool um, just adding to our worship experience. Um, I'm going to ask my friends Cole and Sarah to come on up. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Jackson Cooper. I'm the Youth and Young Adults Director, or uh, um, the, the little people, and I forget how I word that. Anyway, <laughs> come on, Cole and Sarah. Who wants to hold the mic? The little big people, I don't know. All right, so can y'all introduce yourselves? Hi, my name is Cole Bender and I am seven years old. And what grade are you in? Um, I'm gonna be in second grade soon. Cool, cool. And what's your name? My name is Sarah Bender and I will be in kindergarten. Sweet, sweet. So I have an imaginary scenario. So, so go into your imagination, right? Mm -hmm. All right, y'all in it? Are you in your imagination? Mm 
What's it look like? Is it dark in there um, or is it colorful? Mine's like a forest. A forest. Oh, that's good. That's good. We're going camping. Okay. Imagination. We're, we're, it, we're going camping, right? All right. What do you think we need to go camping? A flashlight. A flashlight. If it's dark and we need some yeah, we're bringing water up bad memories. and some food. Water and food. I heard it. So, so I, I have a book bag, and, and my book bag contains all the stuff we need to go camping. Like I have a, a Nintendo Switch gaming controller. <laughs> um, I have the, a book of Hebrews. Are you interested? You want to read that? No. Okay. Sounds good. And I got a loaf of bread. That's all I got. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Would you like a slice? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, y'all messed up already. Okay. <laughs> Is it good? Yeah. Okay. Is your throat dry? Mm-mm. Can you talk? I could nod earlier. Okay. So, so we have this bread, right? Uh-huh. What else do we need? We can't, we can't go into the woods and, like, survive, right, with, with just bread, right? No, we need a lantern. We need a lantern. Okay. And water. And water, yep. And a tent to sleep. A tent to sleep, yeah. So, so bread alone doesn't, doesn't do much for us, right? Uh-uh. So, so we're going to be in John uh, 6 today, and it says, in verse 27, it says, Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. So, does, does bread go bad? Yes. When's the last time y'all ever cleaned out the bread out of y'all's um, um, pantry? Um, Ever? Not really. Oh, yeah, I don't think so. Me neither. Not Bailey does that. Yeah, so, so bread gets really moldy after a while, and then it's no good, right? Yeah. And so, so if I wanted to go into the, the woods and, and fight a couple bears, and all I had was bread, I ain't doing too good, right? No. And so Jesus is saying that we shouldn't be living for things of, of uh, timely, uh, what's the word? Things that will perish, we don't want to live for things that are, are just going to last us for a minute, that, that'll feed us for a second, and then we get hungry again, or uh, give us a little bit of water, and then we get thirsty again. Um, and so in verse 35, it says, Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And so this, this bread that I have here is not like Jesus. It, it gets bad, and it gets disgusting, but Jesus is saying, what I give you, will never go bad. What I give you will never get disgusting. It'll feed you eternally. And so, you know, last week we talked about Jesus being the living water um, and and something that would cause us never to thirst. And and this week is the bread of life. But one thing keeps coming back, and it's that we need to have faith in Jesus. And I think I just got breadcrumbs in my eyebrow. So shout out to that. But you see, bread alone doesn't taste amazing, does it? No. What do, you, what do you put on your bread? Um, usually peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, yeah. Or turkey. Or turkey. Oh, <laughs> fancy. Um, see, see, bread like this, it only gives us a, just a little bit of hunger, uh, satisfied. Yeah. We need more. We need Jesus to, mm-hmm. to feed us and to, to give us so we don't thirst anymore. Yeah. Do y'all mind praying with me? Mm-hmm. All right. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this day. I thank you for this time together. I thank you for being the bread of life and for being living water, Lord. We thank you for all that you give us and that you continue to give us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good stuff. Is that Wonder Bread? It is. Jackson? Oh, Lord. Phew. Okay, John chapter six. Uh, I wanna, I wanna show you something really, really cool in this in this chapter. <clears throat> so John, as you know, we're spending the summer in John, and John is a gospel that is, um, it it's mystical, it's majestic, it it brings it it really works more in the vertical than in the horizontal, and so John is always providing not only a backstory, but he's giving us something in a text that then just gets kind of elevated. 
And, <clears throat> and that's going to happen in a, in a beautiful way today if you, as, as you watch this. So chapter 6 in John starts, if you, if you just look at sort of your captions, it starts with Jesus feeding the 5,000. Okay? <clears throat> so this kind of huge miracle of food, people are gathered. Um, 5,000 men, it actually says, or likely doesn't include the, the children and the, and the women, so many, many more. Little boy in John brings the offering of uh, five loaves, two fish. And then <clears throat> Jesus, right after that, you'll see in the caption, he walks on the water, okay? Okay, then you see Jesus have this conversation about the bread of life, and, and this conversation about the bread of life is really, is really a conversation about what we call manna, and, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So, so here's the context. We're in the, we're in the section in John, in chapter 6, where Jesus is having that conversation about, about the bread or the manna. And I want I, I to I, I wanna say this as, as we begin, is that you know, Jesus is saying that um, you know, you, you're believing me, the people who were there, because of what I did, what you saw with the, the food, the 5,000. But there's something else. And then they ask him, what, well, what is required? So pick up at verse 29, and Jesus says this. The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, what sign then would you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it's not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven. It is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. <clears throat> and then Jesus goes on and he has this conversation about what this bread of life is and and that, uh, that you know, those who ate the manna have, have died, but those who eat of this bread will live forever. And then he says, this bread is my flesh. And, and then they start, they start to grumble amongst themselves because that doesn't make sense to them. And, 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 and it doesn't end in a, it, it actually ends with some people just kind of walking away from him. Okay, now, <clears throat> so here's the question today. I have a dear friend who, a mentor years ago in business that said, you know, Jim, there are really only two questions in life. In every relationship, every conversation you have with an employee or with an employer or, or anyone, there's really just two questions. The first question is this, what do you want? So he would always engage in any conversation with anybody he met that wanted to meet with him. He would begin by saying, what do you want? I mean, what, what is it that you want to come out of this? <clears throat> what do you want? He says, the second question is this, what do you really need? So what do you want and what do you really need? And this mentor says that, that life is really lived in the tension between those two questions, what do you want and what do you really need? Now I might ask that question spiritually this way, what do you pray for? As you start to reflect on your life, what, <clears throat> what is it that you pray for? And here's the second question, what should you pray for? So what do you pray for? What should you pray for? And I would say to you that, that our spiritual lives are lived in the tension of those two questions. So the Gospel of John wants to seek this reconciliation between, you know, what do you want, what do you really need? What do you pray for and, and what should you pray for? John wants to resolve it this way. <clears throat> by helping us understand that it's all wrapped up in, in who the, the rescuer is, or, or what, what the Jews might call the Messiah, the, the rescuer. And, and John gets this very, very clearly, is that in, in the Old Testament, so for in, in the Hebrew Scriptures, the rescuer is, is Moses. He's the central figure for, for what it is to be rescued. And by the time of Jesus, Moses had been in a sense, or, or Moses' actions had been in a sense equated with, with what the Messiah would do. 
And that's why, when you, when you reflect on this, it, to this day, the most important festival for the Jews is the festival of Passover. It's, it's that commemoration of what Moses did as he liberated his people from the bondage of more than 400 years of Pharaoh and, and was able to, to, to be, to be the, the vehicle, the vessel that, 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 that enabled them to be set free and enter into ultimately into the promised land. <clears throat> and you remember the story of the Passover, right? So here we are in Egypt. We have been in bondage for these years. We're making bricks without straw. And Moses now is called by God to come back. He's, he's left. He's come, he comes back as a Hebrew. And, and he, he, he starts to talk about with Pharaoh about these plagues. The plagues come. You remember Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He can't receive it. And then the last plague that is to take place is this, is that um, the angel of death is supposed to come. And the angel of death is to bring just death for children and destruction and, you know, all of this. So God says to the to the Hebrews, Here, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take, I want you to go get a, uh, every family. Um, I want you to get a, a, a lamb, a goat, a sheep, a year old, and I want you to slaughter it. I don't want you to take its entrails out. I just want you to grill it, roast it completely like that. <clears throat> I want you to, um, I want you to, to make some bread, but, but this bread I want you to make in a hurry. You don't have time for it to leaven. You don't have time for it to rise. So I don't want any yeast in it. I want it just to be this, this unleavened bread. And then I want you to eat that bread while you're standing up, while you have your staff in your hand, while, you're, while you've got your, your, your coat on, and while you have your sandals on. So like you're ready to go. Oh, oh and by the way, <clears throat> some of that blood that came from slaughtering the animal, I want you to, to take that blood and I want you to, to paint it on the top of the lintel, the, the top of the door of your house. Uh, this is to this day why Lutheran churches have red doors, right? Okay, so I want, you to, I want you to paint it up there so that when the angel of death comes, I, I, he, that angel will pass over your house. That's where the, where the word Passover comes, right? That, that angel will, will pass over your house. And so sure enough, they, 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 have this, they have this big meal, right? They have this, this, this big meal where they roast something and, <clears throat> and then they have this bread. And, and then, and then as, as, as the angel of death comes, the, the Egyptians want them to leave. Uh, they, they leave. The Egyptians kind of change their mind. Pharaoh does, and he starts to chase after them. They get to the Red Sea. It's all water, right? And so God separates the water, and so they walk across. They walk on the dry land, but sort of walk across in a sense the water. They get to the other side. Pharaoh's army comes. Pharaoh's army is in the middle of this sea while it's separated, and then it just crushes back over with them in water, and they're wiped out so that they're safe on the other side. And then when they get to the other side, it takes them 40 years to figure out how to get into the promised land. They're a little slow, but, but when, they're, when they're over there, <clears throat> in the second month, God starts to provide for them in a special way. He gives them what we call manna. It's, 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 it often it's called kind of the, the bread from heaven. We don't know really even the word manna uh, simply means what is this in Hebrew. <clears throat> We're not quite sure what it is. We've never seen it equated in any other. It's described a little bit, but, but they get this manna, and the manna comes every morning, and, and each, each family can collect like four liters of it. God puts quail out as well. And then the Bible says that <clears throat> every single day for the rest of that 40 years, they receive this, this daily bread, right? This, this, this morning allotment. And God says you can't store it up, you can't, you, you can't put it aside, except on the Sabbath, because you're not going to work on the Sabbath, so you can do that. But if you, if you try to store up more than, than one daily allotment, it's going to rot on you. And sure enough, it does when they, when they try to store that. So, <clears throat> so this is the Passover story, right? And for the Jews today, I mean, the, the, the youngest child asks the oldest man at the Passover meal, at the, at the Seder, uh, you know, Father, why is tonight unlike any other night? It is the, it is the defining moment for the Hebrews. Interestingly enough, it's hugely significant in the African-American church too, much more than you find in, in the white church. Um, and, I, and I think there's some very clear reasons for that. So, so here's this defining, this defining moment. That's happened, and, and, and now when you get to the sixth chapter of John, notice that it says it was Passover time. So in the sixth chapter, it's Passover time. So everyone's thinking about this, and this is what's happening. And, and, and think of what, what just happened. So remember in the Passover, there's this big meal. You eat while you're, you're, you're kind of in a hurry. What does Jesus do in the sixth chapter? Is he, he feeds 5,000 people who are there hungry. 
right? A big meal, right? Grill something, give some bread, right? <clears throat> and, then, and then you remember what happens when, they, when, 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 the, when the people are set free, they, they get to the Red Sea, the, the water's open, they walk across the water, and then what does Jesus do next in the sixth chapter is, is Jesus now walks on the water, okay? And then you remember what happens when they get into the wilderness in the second month of 40 years, they, they, they get this manna and it comes for them every day. And, the, and then you realize that, 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 that what, what happens in John is you got, okay, you, you got the, the feeding of the 5,000, you got the meal, you, you got the walking on the water, and then the very next thing is you got this conversation about the bread of life, about manna. I mean, it's really amazing when you start to look at this. The sixth chapter of John is John retelling the Passover story in the light of who Jesus is. I mean, it's amazing when you start to think about this. <clears throat> and, 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 and in it, it gets even, it gets even better because when, when Jesus is walking on the water, he, he says to the people, he says, when, when he, when he gets, to, gets to the boat, he says, it is I. And then, and then, and then, and then when, he, when, he, when he starts to talk about the bread, the bread of life, he, he says, I am the bread of life right? <clears throat> and, and then he, he gets into this really great conversation because they keep thinking, well, well, maybe you're Moses. Because they want him to be Moses. They want him to be the Messiah. And they thought the Messiah would be like a new Moses. Moses that was enabled to, to do these things. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. He said, I, I don't give bread like Moses. I am the bread of life. <clears throat> and what John is doing in the sixth chapter is he is abs- asking what I think is the absolute most challenging spiritual question ever, and it's this. Do I want the gifts of God or do I want God? Because the people that are talking to Jesus are saying, well, maybe you can prove yourself to us by giving us manna. And, 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 and Jesus is like, no, I don't need to prove that. Rather than the provision of manna, they want the proof of manna. And, 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 and it, it's, this is, it's, it's amazing to me when I start to look at this. And Jesus is saying, really, here, here's your choice. You can have me, or you can have what you want from me. You can have <clears throat> the gifts of God, or you can have God. And John's point is, you get to choose. You get to choose which God you pursue. So I've got a, a really dear friend in ministry, Presbyterian pastor, who um, <clears throat> early in ministry served a church in Alaska. And um, he would, he would uh, his daughter, Crystal, would, um, w- was, was little, and, and he did this thing where he would train her because, you know, there's earthquakes continually. So he decided he was going to train her. It took, you know, he figured out it took probably 30, 40 days for a habit to, to be built. And so every, every day he would, he would get her in, in the living room and he would say, okay, baby, we're going to act like an earthquake's coming. We're going to start shaking. You know, it's kind of fun. And he says, and when the earthquake comes, here's what you do. You run and you get under the table, this big table, this one safe table. <clears throat> and so they, they'd practice and they'd run, get under the table together and they'd giggle. And he'd do it day after day after day after day after day for like 30, 40 days. And then sure, sure enough, like just a couple of months later, I- instead of them playing like it, the ground starts to shake. And, 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 and the ground starts to shake, and, and, and here she does, this habit that she has. She runs. Where does she run? She runs straight to her dad. When she abandons the table, she runs straight to her dad. Now, now we know that story, right? It's a beautiful childhood story. It's a, it's a childhood story of of trusting kids who know that the, that the most safe and secure place is to be in the arms, in the embrace of a loving parent. We get that, we all know that. That's beautiful about it, but you know what's sad? Is that something happens to us when we start to grow up and we think we shouldn't need our dad. Instead, it's what our dad can do for us. Give me the car keys, Dad. Can I have them, please? That's from Cats in the Cradle, by the way. We, we start, to, <clears throat> we, we start to, to grow up and we think, I, I can do it if you just help me, Dad. Just, just, give, me, just give me the opportunity for the, for the right education. Just give me the, the right setting. Just give me, I, I can do it if you... And this is why... In Exodus, the people, they get manna every single day. I mean, it's great, tasty, perfect. It's great. 
They get it every single day. Every time they get thirsty, there's a rock or something that Moses works on. <clears throat> they get water. They get protected. They get the presence of God with them. I mean, he's in the tabernacle. When Moses goes to hang out with God, he comes back and his face shines. We know it's a cloud by day and a fire by night that God travels with them everywhere they are. But you know what happens as they start to grow up in the wilderness? They start to forget it's about being with God and it's what they want from God. It's, it's so sad that they start to grumble. And then the people in the sixth chapter of John start to grumble as they're talking to Jesus. Because it's, it's no longer what do I need, but what do I want? And you see, we do the same. We so very often choose the gifts of God instead of God. And the irony in this is that, is that as, as, as we grow up, what we so very often do is that we, we, we start to say, well, you know, this is, God, God give, me that, give me that perfect marriage. Give me that, give me that, perfect, give me that perfect friend. Give me that, that perfect date. Give me that, that perfect call of, of, of a job. Lord, give me, that, give me that strength for that test. Give me... And, and you start to realize that, that what we've done is we've created a transaction instead of a relationship. And the irony about that is, is that we pursue relationship in every other place of our lives, except with God. God, give me that perfect relationship. Give me that perfect friendship. Lord, Lord, help me. Don't let me be lonely. All those kinds of things. And yet the one true relationship is the one that, 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 we, that we don't even think about because we've We've grown up. And so what about you today? What do you want? And what do you really need? What, what do you pray for? And what should you pray for? Do you want the gifts of God? Or do you want God? Do you want the great I am or the great I give you? Okay. Now that's okay so far. If I end it right there, that's lousy preaching because it's like, Jim, tell me, help me. How do I get it right? How do I get it right? <clears throat> how, do I, how do I not, when I start to think about the things for which I pray, how do I... How do I get it right? How do I, how do I really n know what I, what I need rather than, than what I want? And, and you know, and I, can, I can give you some simple things. Here's a simple one. You know, twice, the, the Lord's Prayer shows up twice in, in the New Testament. It shows up in Matthew and it shows up in Luke. In one of the contexts in Luke, uh, the disciples come to Jesus, Jesus' disciples come and say, hey, John the Baptist people have a prayer. Which, it, which really means kind of like they got a t-shirt and we don't have a t-shirt. And I really mean that. They're really like saying, hey, they got a special prayer. It's like John the Baptist prayer. We want a Jesus prayer. So Jesus says, okay, if we're going to pray, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And you go through that prayer. And you'll notice that when Jesus says pray like this, Jesus only prays for one material thing. Enough bread for today. In fact, the word is so interesting to us in Greek, it doesn't appear in other places. We're not even quite sure what it means. But just give me enough for today. Because the true bread that I really need is going to rot if I try to store it up. As soon as those possessions start to be something I need to hoard, they're no longer your gift. So that's a start, right? I mean, that's a, that's a really important start. <clears throat> But, but let me give you something else that maybe is even more basic. Let's just start with the very basic, basic food group, bread. The basics of bread. That's what this passage is about. So what if you invited Jesus to lunch today and broke bread with him? What if you invited him to lunch? Said, Lord, I... I've got something I want to give back to you. What are tithes and offerings and all, all right? But what if you invited him to lunch? And what if, as a good 
host. You simply said this. Jesus, what's on your mind today? Are you crying and mourning over 150 people who were fast asleep when a building collapsed on top of them? Are you mourning over what's going on in Tigray, in Ethiopia, where food has become a weapon? Are you smiling that a baby was born this morning with 10 fingers and 10 toes? Do you find as much joy in a sunrise and beauty in a sunset as so many others? What's on your mind? What's on your heart? I believe that if you simply did that and never got to your wants, that you would make Jesus happier than perhaps he's ever been in eternity. Gifts of God are a mighty thing. But to be with him, to run, when the ground starts shaking, not to a safe place he's given you, but to his very arms, you have a choice. And the choice will first be made in whom it is that you decide to break bread for lunch. Amen? Amen. Amen. So friends, we have the opportunity to respond to God's overwhelming love for us. And one of the beautiful ways that we do that is is entering into prayer. And as you have that brunch with Jesus today, I encourage you to have a conversation with some of these prayer requests and how it is that, that we can lift up those who are in need of our support and care and rejoice with those who are rejoicing. We want to pray for um, continued reconciliation in our country, prayers for those who are suffering from COVID and the variation, the Delta virus, prayers for those facing surgery and recovering from surgery, special prayers for our military and those who are enduring deployment. For our students and leaders, so Jackson's taking a big group to, to Fuge Camp, which is in Black Mountain, North Carolina. So they leave Thursday, Tuesday morning and come back Saturday, so safe travels for them. And, and awesome opportunities for our youth to worship and to encounter Jesus in new ways. So we pray for transformation. Um, also prayers for those who are traveling and vacationing. Um, Special prayers for Chris McKinnon-Hing. Chris was hit by a drunk driver back in April and continues to recover at the Moss Center in Philadelphia. Um, Prayers for for healing for her and and progress in her recovery. Also prayers for her husband, Zach, and her parents, Pat and Colin, and also her grandmother, Ariana, all members of our congregation. And also um, special prayers for Cheryl and Ron Fritch upon the sudden death of their son, Scott. So we pray that that comfort and peace and wholeness would would be with them as they mourn his loss. 
We also received 85 prayer requests through our connection cards, prayers for healing, specific prayers from, for family and friends, for those who are enduring great loss, for guidance, for discernment, and five praise reports, which we're always happy to hear as well. So let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for these requests. We thank you for the privilege of rejoicing with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep. We pray, Lord, that as we lift them up in our hearts and in our minds and in our lives, that you would show us, Lord, how it is that we can be present with you as they suffer, as they rejoice, as they enter into transformation. We lift our lives to you, Lord, and pray that your will will be done through them. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mr. Moderator, speaking for the people of the church, I bring the following people to be ordained and installed as officers in the church. For the office of elder, the Keisha Biggs, to be ordained. Grayson Bryant, to be ordained. Brian Collins will be commissioned by session in August. Michael Crumley, to be ordained. Creighton Holt, to be ordained. Rochelle Matthews, to be installed for a second term. She's not present with us today. Christine Rand, to be installed. For the office of deacon, Monica Baker will be commissioned by session in August. Allison Bow to be ordained. Ann Burroughs will be commissioned by the session in August. Alana Hugo to be ordained. Taylor Humans to be ordained. already putting Michael to work. <laughs> so elders and deacons, I have these questions for you, for our newly elected elders. Will you be a faithful elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in governing bodies of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? And for our deacons, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendliness of those in need? In your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? These questions are for the congregation. Do we, the people of the church, accept these servants of Christ as elders chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? Please respond, we do. We do. Do we agree to encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow as they guide us serving Jesus Christ, who alone is the head of the church? We do. One of the beautiful things of continuity with the church over the generations and thousands of years now is the way we ordain our leaders, our servant leaders. And we do it by the placing of hands in prayer. Uh, it goes back to the earliest blessings of our people in the Hebrew scriptures. It goes to the New Testament as we start to see the commissioning and the calling of people into ministry. And it's what we continue to do today. We call it apostolic succession, that in something in the spiritual laying on of hands, that the Spirit of God comes and rests upon our leaders as they serve and our servants as they lead. So I want to invite all of you who were ordained officers in the Presbyterian Church USA, whether you be elders, deacons, or uh, ministers of word and sacrament, to come up and to be part of our prayer and the laying on of hands.
Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day, for the sunrise. We thank you for the beauty of the world. We thank you for the sun raised in our hearts and in our midst. And we pray your Holy Spirit to come upon us as a gathered community. We thank you for the call of leadership and service. And we thank you for the call of service and leadership. We pray, Lord, that these people that you have called, our sisters and brothers, to serve you through this church, that they would receive an anointing of your spirit and your presence in such a way that they would know that you are with them and you lead and you guide them in all that they do. We pray for strength and encouragement for them. And we give you all glory, Lord, and an honor for the call that you have placed upon them as we seek to serve you in these challenging and yet most exciting times in the life of the church. We pray all of this in the beautiful, holy, majestic name of our Savior Jesus, who taught us when we pray that we might make bold and pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, you are now officers of our congregation and in the Presbyterian Church USA. Whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. We have one more gift for you before you, you get up. It's a, it's, it's a gift of an, of an actual, of a, actually of an apron with a C4C on it to remind you of Church for the City. It is, it is our way of being able to call you into leadership that serves and into service that leads. And so we pray that there will be many, many moments and times when we are gathered together, that those aprons will be upon you and that your hearts will be shared with us and that the love of grace will continue to be made known through each of you. And I look so very forward to growing our spiritual friendship as we serve and as we lead together. In the beautiful name of Jesus, amen. God to thee. 
How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Hey, Brian, I was hearing him sing. Uh, we can do that again, man. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, let's it keep singing. My soul, my Savior God, to be. How great Thou art. How great Thou art. Dancing's my How great Thou art, how great Thou art, how great Thou art, how great Thou So I... I, I love you enough to tell you the truth. And uh, here's the truth. I really believe that the most challenging spiritual question that is ever asked is this. Would you rather have the gifts of God or would you rather have God? What do you want? What do you need? What do you pray for? What should you pray for? You want the gifts? Or do you want God? And the choice you make is an eternal choice. Because all the gifts of God pass away. But He never does. He is the bread of life. The one thing that not only sustains us today, but calls us into eternity. So I'll be praying for you as you make that choice. You're not gonna make it just saying, this is my choice. You're gonna make it by who you invite to lunch today. You're gonna make it by how you, how you enter into a prayer and truly, and truly, truly mean it, not just as a preamble for my wants, but truly say, Lord, how are you doing today? You're gonna make it by that daily bread you have and whether you decide to share it with someone who doesn't or whether you wanna store it away. So now, go forward, have lunch with him, break bread, live into the promises of God because the gifts are great, but when the ground starts to shake, there's nothing better than your daddy's arms. So live simply, love generously, serve faithfully, speak truthfully, pray daily, and leave all these things to the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and bring you peace. Oh. Bless.
rise and shine for your life has come and the glory of the Lord is over you rise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is over you we sing Oh uh...